Before we go tonight, a story just in time for Halloween when ghosts will be wandering the streets. Well, what if you saw those spirits not just one night a year, but every day? 16 by 9 caught up with a guy who claims he does. Get in the way, I'm never alone. In the dark, Mark Jade scribbles his thoughts. Normally, I'd see them as how they died. This man that I'm hearing had heart problems. Uncontrollable, unreadable thoughts. A lot of people think they understand, but they don't. So it can be lonely. She's talking about water, the ocean, something about ocean. He's listening to the words, the whispers from the other side. It's like the image of its body is separated from the soul, but the soul yet is not. It doesn't have an image. The souls he claims to see and hear are as real to him as you and me. And for Mark, his gift, he claims, is to help reconnect the dead with their families left behind. More on this in a moment. But first, we decided to put Mark's abilities to the test. So we went in search of lost souls on the busy streets of downtown Toronto. I see a lot of people. You see the people you see. I see mine, including the ones you see. What's a rough number we're looking at? Oh, on this side, maybe about a good, maybe 20 more. The ones that get me is the, the ones at the corner of your eye. And you turn around and you think there's no one there and it's your imagination. You turn around again and bam. So, yeah, so there's one right there in the corner there. Mark has had this ability since he was a kid. The fun part is that they come to me. I don't go to them. Do you know of a man who died of cancer? My father? Yeah. Now, he's with you right now. And I don't know if you understand the terms earthbound and crossed over, but when he's us crossed over, that means I can still hear him, but he's at peace. And he's just wanted to tell me that he was with you today, okay? I'm very patient with what I do. I have to, because not only do I have the living to take care of, but I also have people who pass. Forget about the light bulb that keeps coming out. It's your father that's doing that. Oh, really? Yeah, so every time it, if it happens, just say, all right, Dad, you know what? I know you're here. Mark convinced these two, but we were still skeptical. So we took him to the Elgin and Winter Garden Theater in Toronto, a place that has been known to have its own connection to the paranormal. The minute he walks through the door, he says he sees a ghost. He's standing right here. I'd say about maybe medium-sized build, um, about maybe 5'8", five, 5'7". Five, Mark even gets a name. Like? Sam. Sam is the name. Um, crazy enough, people actually would hear him play, even after, you know, him being dead. Well, I don't know, you tell me. It sounds like saxophone or something. He hears music mingled with murder. You see, Mark says more than one person has died here. I need to track down a person. She's a lady, he says. I need to find her. If in your right ear, if it rings as if you came out of a club, it actually means that someone's talking to you. Except I have the ability to hear words through that ring. Tell me you smell lavender. It smells flower. No? Maybe it's just me. Our ghost walk takes us from one point of the theater to another until Sam brings us to the place he died. So this is where he would have died, right? This one does not look very good. This is where the orchestra would, would be? Because if anything, he would have died down here. He fell down here. We don't stray too far into the theater before we are on the move again, searching high and low for the other victim. Yeah, this is where the lavender lady makes sense. She's got blonde hair, and she's pulling her way back. Her hair is bunned up. 
I'd say early 20s. She's the one that got murdered, actually. Why are you here? Unfinished business, all right. She's there now? Yeah. Earthbound spirits, they have unfinished business with the living. Ellen Flowers works at the theater. She says she's heard the tale of the lavender lady before. A couple of our volunteers have cited her before, or on the uh, grand staircase, as well as Sam, who w our understanding was that he perhaps was a trombone player. And as quickly as she came, she's gone. She says, that's it, I'm out. <laughs> mm. Wow, that's cool. For the skeptics, still among the 16 by 9 staff, Mark scribbles on his pad, summoning the spirits in a special seance. Was this woman on your mom's side of the family? Your grandma? Yes. She's asking if you, did anyone in the family give you a picture of some sort? It's like a, it, 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 there's trees, there's something in this painting. I have this painting here. Okay. Is it under a staircase or? It, it's, Behind it's a staircase. Very staircase, because she's saying, Take the picture and put it up. Well, tell her it doesn't match my decor right now. <laughs> <laughs> and whether you're a believer or not, Mark says don't be too quick to write him off. One day, you might need him. You judge whatever you want to judge. But if you die, don't come to see me. Don't, don't come see me, because I will not talk to you. And that is our broadcast for this evening. For more on tonight's stories, head to our website at global16by9.com. I'm Carolyn Jarvis. From all of us here, thanks for watching and have a great weekend.